What's going on guys? So, I've been using the beta version of watchOS 7 on my Series 5 Apple Watch for over a week now, and this has been my experience with it so far. Now, right away, admittedly, surprisingly this is really stable compared to watchOS 6 beta, if I recall. Last year beta, I remember, it used to draw a lot more energy, so ruin the battery life, but with this, I'm getting the same average all day battery. But yes, once in a while, my Apple Watch will randomly crash, but since I'm using the Series 5, I'm sure this also applies on the Series 4, these watches are really fast, so even when it's rebooting, in less than a minute, my watch will be back and running. Now, I only personally experience this like once every two days, so it's not really that big of an issue. But to the most part, so far, it has been extremely stable. But what I want to go ahead and talk about in today's video is go through my favorite features and things that I really do like about watchOS 7. So let's go ahead and get started. So a small change, but definitely a significant improvement is the watch face customization options. So if we go here on, let's go on this Chronograph Pro, the new watch face that they added. Again, this is only available on the Series 4 and the Series 5 because on my Series 3, in the same beta update, it doesn't have this watch face. So unfortunately, if you have an older Apple Watch like the Series 3, uh, that supports watchOS 7, you're not getting this watch face, unfortunately. But if you look closely, compared to watchOS 6, they redesigned this layout, the UI. As you can see, now things are clearly labeled. Now whenever you go into your colors, you actually have dots right here. So you know what the next color is going to look like as soon as you change the watch face to that color. So this minor change, I think, was a nice touch because it's a lot easier to select the color you're actually looking for. Then if we go to the complication, where in the past you actually had to scroll all the way down through the list of many different complications you have available. Now in watchOS 7, if you scroll, it's immediately going to switch to the alphabetical order. So if you know the name of that complication, you can just go to the letter and find it quicker this way. But then not only that, if there's a complication like one of the native ones that have multiple options, like the weather for example, you see we have different weather apps that we could actually put as a complication. And underneath here, there actually is a more option too. So all your complications are now nicely categorized, which is really nice. Now a small improvement that I noticed, if you're using a Series 5 Apple Watch with always on display enabled, before whenever you tap on the screen and you want to go into the application you have to tap twice so one to wake up the screen and the other time to tap on that complication now i notice whenever the screen is dimmed and you tap on that complication you don't have to tap it again because it immediately it's going to take you to the complication that you tapped on so it's a faster process to get access to a application from the watch face now the next new features can be found inside the setting application Right here, right above, we now have a dedicated section for notifications. In here, you have more control for other stuff like notification indicator. When this is enabled, this will put that little red dot on top of your watch face whenever you have some untouched notifications. If you don't like that, you can now disable that. And then right below that is always show short looks. When this is on, an Apple Watch is on your wrist, a notification short look will appear whenever Apple Watch is locked or unlocked. So you could adjust that. There's also notification privacy. This will basically only show the notification of the app without giving like a brief summary or anything like that. So if you get an incoming message, it's not gonna show it on your wrist. It's just gonna tell you you have a message, that's it. Down here below that, there's also this announce message, which this will let Siri read out loud your message as long as you have a pair of AirPods or other supported headphones connected to your Apple Watch. This is great, let's say you have your hands full, you're working out, you're training, and you're listening to music, someone messaged you during your set, Siri will actually let you know who sent you a message and what does the body of the text says. And while we're at the topic of Siri, another new change, now whenever you launch Siri, there's now this new animation. Now this new animation, unfortunately, is only available for the Series 4 and the Series 5, because this Series 3 is also running the same beta, but it still retained the old animation of Siri, unfortunately. This may be due to the fact that the screen is smaller, so this was probably the reason why it wasn't innovated on the Series 3. And also, now whenever the microphone is enabled, 
there actually is a new orange mic icon that goes on top. This icon is very similar to like the green dot or the light that goes on whenever your webcam is enabled. But now whenever the microphone is enabled, this icon will always go on. So if you're having a conversation during a phone call with your watch, the icon will stay on. If you're using other third party apps that utilize the microphone like Shazam, you're always going to see that orange microphone. Now Apple did the exact same thing on iOS 14 as well as the beta version of iPad OS as whatever app is using the microphone, that icon is going to stay on, which is kind of nice. This is more like a security purpose. This way, the user always knows if there's an application listening. Now the next two change that I really do like is the camera app. Not only is can it now be set as a complication, bypassing the need to actually go into your app library and select it that way, but now whenever you launch it, it still will automatically launch it on your iPhone, switch your iPhone and mirror your screen to your Apple Watch. But instead of previously you had to like force press to use the other settings that it has, now you actually have these little dots right here where you can actually quickly tap on and everything is better organized in my opinion. It still has the same settings that it previously had, it's just now it's clearly labeled and you don't have to like toggle until you switch to that third setting in order. Now you can actually hop in and change it right there. You may also now turn off the 3 second timer and when the timer is turned off if you tap and hold it will automatically begin recording. Of course the digital crown will allow you to zoom out if you have the ultra wide lens or zoom all the way in for your other lens. Now what does this mean? Well what it looks like, it looks like Apple is trying to eliminate force touch because if we bring down our notifications now we actually have the clear all option all the way on top. Where in the past in WatchOS 6 you actually had to force press if you want to clear all these notifications. It looks like Apple is trying to do the transition to the Apple Watch as well. So that said, it's possible that the next generation Apple Watch may not have support for force touch. So we just have to wait and see, but so far from what it looks like, it looks like they're trying to remove it. But if you want to know my thoughts about what I think about that transition, it's actually a good thing because most of these hidden features were because a lot of people didn't expect a certain app or a certain setting to have some type of force touch support. So it could be a win-win. We just have to wait and see what happens next. Because another thing that I noticed, now whenever you go to the app layouts, before, by 3D pressing, you'll have the option to switch to the list if you don't like this grid view. Now, whenever you do that, it doesn't do anything. This just caused the app to go into editing mode because I was holding it for two to three seconds, but it didn't give any haptic feedback or anything like that. So now if you want to switch it to the grid view, you need to go into your settings and go down to where you see app view. Right here, you can select list view. So that's how you go from the honeycomb grid view to the list view if this is what you're looking for. Somewhat of an inconvenience because it requires a little bit more extra steps and a process to be memorized to switch it to this look. But you can still slide left if you want to delete a certain app this way. But again, the force press doesn't do anything now. So the introduction of hand washing detection is new this year for the Apple Watch. Unfortunately, it's only available for the Series 4 and the Series 5 because those two devices are the only two that support the auto workout detection, which looks like it's what's used to activate this. Now, upon my experience with this feature enabled, it actually works surprisingly very well. It's very similar to like the workout detection. It will actually credit you in case it misses like the first few seconds when you started washing your hands. So even if it doesn't detect it right away, as long as you continue doing that motion, that rotation with your wrist, it will actually credit you the time that it missed earlier on. And once you're done washing your hand, it will actually give you a haptic touch and will also play a little pin sound too to let you know that you have completed the 20 second timer and will also congratulate you with this bubble animation, which is kind of cool. But so far, from my experience, it works 90% of the time, which is really good. It's just a darn shame, as I previously mentioned, it doesn't support it on the Series 3. Maybe a future beta update? Possibly? Who knows? And yes, if you're curious, if you want to disable this completely, you can, very similar to like the breathe reminder. If you go into your settings, you can actually go into the hand wash section right here and turn it off completely or change other settings as well. Then, in addition to that, if you launch the health app on your iPhone and you go to browse and other data hand washing, it actually keeps track how many times you actually make it past the 20 seconds. 
So you have a general idea if you're too short on your hand washing. So I thought this was really interesting. You may also manually log it in if you want to. Now aside from that, the other new feature obviously is sleep tracking support is now available for the series Apple Watch. If your watch is running watchOS 7, this is available for the series 3, series 4, and series 5. So all of these got the same treatment. And once you have everything set up, there's a dedicated app here with a bunch of different settings. You could change the schedule if you want to, but I already covered this on a previous video, so I'm not going to go too much into the detail. And I also wanted to experiment with this a little bit more. But what I want to talk about is located in the control center. The control center has a few new toggles. Here you could quickly enable sleep mode. This is great when you just want to silent all your devices because when this is enabled, it's not only going to begin tracking automatically, but it's also going to switch your Apple Watch watch face to the more energy efficient mode and will also put your devices in do not disturb mode. So if you're about to take a daytime nap, you could quickly enable it like so. But this isn't what I really want to talk about. What I want to talk about is you got to rotate the digital crown to get off this mode, by the way, to unlock your Apple Watch. But if we hop back into the control center, if you go all the way down, you can still readjust this if you want. But this little grayed out box with like volume waves on top of it, what this allows you to do is remember that notification setting that was located in the Apple Watch settings? Well, this is a quick shortcut to enable so that Siri will read out loud your messages. So whenever you have paired Bluetooth headphones on your Apple Watch, when this is enabled, Siri will automatically read whatever message you've received. And when you disable that, it disables that basically. So you have that control here. The similar control can also be found on your iPhone as well. You don't need to be on beta iOS 14 to have this feature. You could toggle this even on iOS 13. But now it's actually available to the Apple Watch. Also still in the control center, you could actually delete some of these toggles. So if you want to remove the ones you don't use, you can now. Also another worth mentioning change is located in Apple Pay. Now whenever you launch Apple Pay, it has a different animation how you select your cards. And not only that, whenever you select a card, it actually will give you more information on top as well. So if you're paying with Apple Cash or Apple Card, it shows more information. And lastly, another worth mentioning feature is found inside the setting application. Now there's a new separate battery tab where in here will not only show you the charging graph throughout the day, there's now is a battery life health capacity right here, a percentage you can view on your Apple Watch, which is great, especially when you're buying a used Apple Watch. You want to make sure your Apple Watch still has enough life remaining. So now, should you install WatchOS 7 on your Apple Watch? Well, if you have a Series 4 and a Series 5, if your Apple Watch does crash on you, it's going to take less than a minute to reboot itself. If you have a Series 3, it may take a couple of minutes, so that's a really big inconvenience. From my personal experience, it only does this like once every two days. Besides that, as you saw, I mean, navigating through these applications, launching third-party apps, everything just loads properly. I haven't experienced any issues whatsoever that would cause me to regret on updating it to watchOS 7 beta. But I honestly have nothing to lose because I do have a backup Apple Watch in case this does become a brick. But so far the experience has been nice. But honestly, I would just recommend to wait a little bit longer until the public beta is released next month. But if you'd like to try it on right now, as long as you have a backup, I mean, it's perfectly fine. So if you do have a backup or you really don't care or don't mind that some of your third party apps may not be supported on watchOS 7 yet, I mean, go for it so far. My experience has been positive and it's also fun to play around, mess around with all the new features and changes. And this also allows you to follow along with some of these watchOS 7 videos. But yeah, there you have it. That is my experience with watchOS 7. Again, um, I'm surprised this is the beta because it surprisingly is really stable. Let me know in the comments if you also are running it on your current Apple Watch and how's your experience been so far on iOS 14 beta. If you discovered any bugs or any issues, feel free to also post that down below. And of course, expect a lot more Apple Watch, even iOS 14 content coming out very soon on this channel. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.